So Beyond Light is now out with a whole host of new perks and mods for us to play around with, and like all seasons, a new artifact with artifact mods has also been released with a few new and returning mods. So here's my quick breakdown of the new mods released, and I will do a proper breakdown of the new ones at a later date once I fully get them. Now before we head off, if you like the content and would like to support the channel, do subscribe for more content like this and be sure to leave a comment in the comment section for anything you would like for me to cover in the near future. The more support we get, the more interesting and fun videos we can go ahead and produce. So first column we have the same old anti-barrier, overload and unstoppable mods with nothing we haven't seen before, nothing that I need to really delve into here. The second column, once again we have a mixture of targeting, loaders and dexterity etc mods, this time on different parts of the armour, nothing once again we haven't seen before. Third column, it seems that Bungie has done away with the glimmer and resourcing generating mods that usually populate this column, which to be honest is quite sad as they are pretty handy for new light players who may need specific resources for upgrading. Instead though, we get access to more mods which make specific weapon archetypes more useful, like the unflinching loader and scavenger mods. One thing I do have to say is that this column seems to be heavily focused around PvP mods areas that a lot of players would rely on rather than PvE. Fourth column, we have some new class item mods that really change up the pace when going up against champions, so I can really see them being useful for ordeal nightfalls. Also, they have low class armor requirements except from Spoils of War, which makes it very easy to slot them in for any builds in mind. The mods such as Surge Eater, which recharge your grenade ability whenever you or a member of your fire team staggers a champion, Thermal Overload, where solar and stasis grenades cause disruption, delaying ability regeneration and lowering combatant damage output, and Spoils of War, which upon defeating a champion by using a finisher, spawns a heavy ammo for you and your fire team are the mods I can see being heavily used for ending content the most. Momentum Siphon and Unstoppable Source Shider Condenser are two mods I can see being paired together to overall make them better, but I can't see them being heavily used in endgame unless they correspond with a melee ability that provides good damage and can be built into very easily. Lastly, we have Column 5, with all the mods being offered being brand new and being the most powerfulest for all players to use. The most noticeable mods I've seen that will most likely be used by players are Unstoppable Shotgun, which provides all shotguns you wield to fire a powerful explosive payload that staggers unshielded combatants, strong against unstoppable champions. Now, depending on how powerful this is, this combined with an aggressive shotgun or a shotgun with a high rate of fire could lead to you melting a lot of enemies in game easily without a sweat. It may also make weapons such as the Four Horseman or the new exotic shotgun something worth looking into as well. We then have Poetic Embrace, where casting a solar super restores you to full health and shields. This will be very useful in endgame content to where you need to clear adds as much as you can while surviving long enough to give your team time to complete the task. I can see this being even more better and useful when a build is created around it utilising the surprise attack mod so that you can have both instantly fast super and full health plus shields on return. I believe this mod will be used quite a bit as well in PvP because of its ease of use, and because you won't really use a lot of mods in PvP for specific builds. Next we have the Berserkers mod, which when your super ends, you gain a temporary bonus to weapon damage. The duration and strength of this bonus increase based on the number of combatants you defeated with your super. Now, this is another mod that I can see being used in PvP for the extra bonus in weapon damage, and when built around super regen builds, the top tier players will get the most out of it. But also, PvE is where you're going to see this become the most used because of how freely you can get your super more often. I can definitely see roaming supers paired with this mod being used the most, and the Crown of Tempest build will probably be on a huge rise once a lot of players get their hands on it. Next, we have the Abyssal Charge mod, where you can become charged with light by defeating combatants with void melee abilities. Now, not a massively powerful mod that I can see being used since the Charge with Light mod is more easier to attain and is safer, but perhaps the Nesrex Sin paired with this mod may have some unique change, or even using the Fell Winter's Helm with a Void subclass could perhaps create something unique as well. 
And lastly, the Thermal Blooming mod, which upon rapidly defeating combatants with so low status melee attacks, create an orb of power for your fire team members. Now, orb of power to me sounds like a weapon damage increasement, the same way that the Power of Esputin mod works. But we do not know how much bonuses it provides, nor do we know what exactly it will provide overall. That's just my theory, of course. As it's something going to be fire team member based, I'm hoping it's going to be something that's going to be providing a large boost in abilities, or it can be a large boost in damage, something that's much more higher than the power of us to mod, or something even unique and something that we've never seen before. We're going to have to wait until people eventually get to this mod and some testing are done. And there you have it, a quick look into the seasonal artifact mods and what they may give. Once I fully unlock the artifacts, I will go ahead and break them down bit by bit individually and show you all the effects, numbers and builds you can create around them. So if that sounds good to you, be sure to stick around when I eventually upload them. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.